Hi guys, this is Fei Wu from Fei's World Podcast, and today I want to introduce you to a pretty amazing app that helps you repurpose your content when it comes to audio or video, including live streaming to other platforms, as you can see on this page. And this app is called Repurpose. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of、um, tutorials on YouTube currently, but as a podcaster who have been podcasting for five years, I want to show you a simple workflow and give you an idea and really a review of what I think of this app and why you should use it too or not. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this page. As you can see, it, the app itself looks like it's still in startupy mode, but it works really well and it's really simple. And John Lee Dumas and a number of other fairly well-known podcasters and content creators are, are already using it. And I do、um, like this creator quite a bit. His name is Hani Mora, and he has created a lot of tutorials on how it works, which I'll also link in the description below. But let's get started, so you get to see what it's like to have a paid account and what I needed to do to get started. Now, once you have a paid account, and there's a link that I've included in the description as well, you do get a free trial and be able to experiment it for free. And I have a paid account. The first section I get on is called connections because you need to make these connections in order for the workflows to work. So for mine,、uh, it's very simple, but you do have other options as you can see here. Right in the dropdown. So what I needed to do is I need to create an input connection as well as an output connection, which has already been done. This is very trivial. You select the connection, click on Add Connection, and enter your credentials. That's it. So right now I have a single input from where my podcast is hosted, and by the way, that is in Libsyn. And at any time, you can reconnect. If the status is inactive, you can rename or you can delete it as well. I only have a single YouTube outlet,、uh, but YouTube is very powerful, as you guys know already, because you're on this platform. And my single output is YouTube. Again, connected through my Gmail account. I am done on this page. Then what I need to do is go to workflow upper left hand corner, and here I just want to show you really briefly what the options are. Again, to me, this whole setup is very clean, and for someone and for most of us who's bombarded well with all these features, such as the latest or what Photoshop has been for the past ten years, it's very overwhelming. But don't、uh, be shocked by how simple this process is. As you can see. I have established a workflow, and you can create new、uh, repurpose workflow at any time. You can name it, and all the actions you have to go through is provided with a name, where the input is, what the action is, and what the output is.、Uh, Haney walked through a very、uh, good tutorial on that, so I'm going to skip this step and walk you right through what needs to be done. So now I'm back at. A workflow I've already established, and you can see the status is green. It's ready to go, and right here the publish mode is currently on manual. I'll explain in a second why that is. Again, you can edit a workflow and delete it. You can change the setting of it. Let me spend just a short moment on this. In terms of settings, for my case, publishing from podcast to YouTube. There are a few things you can determine, which is what you want the YouTube thumbnail to be. And one thing to note is what Repurpose is able to do. It it's that it adds a active waveform. So right now it's static, but once it's published, as I as I will show you in a second, you'll be able to see this waveform throughout, and it will be animated. And this can be very useful. And there are different templates you can rely on. Again, you can preview them. To me, this isn't you know this doesn't matter as much. So I selected waveform as opposed to progress bar. I chose my preview, and 
Uh, right now, I'm not going to really worry about intro and outro file, but if you have them, you can simply browse for them, add them right there. And yeah, everything else you can leave as is. Again, for my purpose, there aren't a set of keywords I necessarily use for uh, my channel. Uh, maybe that's the name of your brand. But what I need to do here is show you um, what I do customize for each of my episodes. So once you click on, uh, once you're good with the general setting, I will click on view episodes. And now this is pulling in all my episodes ever published from October 2014 from Lipson to be right here. And as you can see, some of these status says done, which means they're already published and they're visible, and some of them are to be published. I'm going to show you an example with the latest episode I published, which was uh, two days ago. So once I select publish, and the reason is that this is the screen that I want to have control over. Now, it's now pulling in the title, the description from my podcast hosting domain, hosting service, Lipson, and you can use other services as well. And so what I want to do is actually change this because uh, for YouTube, it doesn't help you as much if you start with something that only makes sense to you, such as episode number, the person's name, if the person isn't someone that the general public is searching for constantly. So I'm going to change that and make it into a how-to statement. So the title is now how to go um, from a single online course to a multi-million empire called School of Motion. And I'm going to add this person's name back again and with semicolon and face world podcast. Um, so again, this title is pretty long. You can certainly change the content here. You can also add, um, for example, what I typically do is I ask people to connect with me on social. You can make all the description changes here. Now, when it comes to keywords, this is where you have unique control over this. So I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to actually add Joey Corman and I will say, School of Motion. I can add Face World, Face World Podcast, and Online Course, which is what he specializes in. And so uh, another one is, you know, making money, for example. And you can, again, go back to your YouTube studio once this is published and change that as needed. The last thing I will do, look, is that I will add a custom YouTube thumbnail. This step for Lipson is something that you can do actually right from where you publish the episode within the edit of that single episode. You can add a square image, a rectangular image. Uh, but for me, what I typically do is um, I'm a little lazy, to be honest. So I, I prefer to do it from here. And what I also use is uh, Canva. I'm a big fan of this app. Um, it's online, canva.com. I'll include it in the description below. Many of you guys are probably using it already. And again, not to really go over the best practices of a thumbnail, but generally speaking, you don't want to use what's generic as seen on YouTube. Instead, you want to use very big font and fewer words, possibly three to four words, and this title is arguably a little bit long, and you want a lot of contrast, such as, you know, white text on black background or black text on, on white background. So I just downloaded the image, and now I'm going to grab it from my download folder, and it's right here. So all I have to do now is hit publish. So now it's spinning, and within seconds, you're going to see that this episode we're just editing is now queued to upload to YouTube. Now, I know Haney says that uh, it actually takes a few minutes from my experience it's taken a little bit longer, but you don't care. You know, once the content is done, all you need to do is make sure that it goes on your YouTube channel. So I'm going to skip over and actually show you uh, what it looks like once it is published. So now this is my um, YouTube channel. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And I will, as you can see, these thumbnails probably appear familiar. And if I refresh this page, you will see that it's been less than a minute. And this video that I was creating just now has not been uploaded. It's not being queued. Don't worry about that. 
So let me show you an example, for example, how to influence experience with design. And this is the thumbnail and you can already see the preview of what it might look like. So let me go ahead and play this for you. So waveform is active. You don't see the thumbnail anymore. I'm going to fast forward. And also there's a lovely, you know, listed on Apple Podcasts as well. I wish there were other options, to be honest, uh, such as Google Podcasts. So I'm going to pause and there you go. Uh, you know, your content takes forever to create, but now it's on YouTube. And again, I uploaded this episode fairly recently because I discovered um, this app, Repurpose.io, recently. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. I think the last thing I will say is, as content creators, we spend so much time brainstorming, creating these content. And one note is that never neglect or ignore uh, the content you have already created. Instead of chasing the next big thing, a new episode, a new guest, it really is worthwhile to reinvestigate and invest your time into how you can repurpose these existing episodes. And based on the platform, you can then choose, you know, what are the tags you need to use? What are the, uh, how to maybe repurpose the content with a different title and things like that. Love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching. Until next time. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do. We are revamping our YouTube channel and we'll be delivering a lot of these tutorials and reviews to you straight away. If you're an independent creator or a creative entrepreneur, this is the channel for you. And thank you for joining me. Please hit the subscribe button, even hit the notification button to not miss new content. <laughs>